just finished building this uh, stone table and it's for a garden so it's a garden stone table put flowers on it whatever you want to do but this is real stone this came from an old sidewalk this is Pennsylvania blue stone and I took the same stone and did it for the little patio on the bottom so it's laid on gravel I'm gonna explain that as we go I'm gonna show you how we did it so here we go uh, right here is where they're gonna put the uh, this uh, picnic table slash what I'll tell you at the end of the video. They dug this deep though. I'm not a fan of digging deep footers. I'm a fan of putting it on gravel and uh, I'll explain why. So we're putting the gravel in now. Now we get this in here and we tamp it real good. The same principle as laying everything on our railroad track. I formed it up and leveled it. Got myself some wire, made sure my thing's square. Now we're just gonna put our cement in. We are putting in a full bucket of sand, putting in a half a bucket of Portland. Let me see, a little more than a half. Put them, mix, mix it up dry. the wire up in the middle and just screen it all out. Half a batch, Mike. Yep. Okay. I'm going to put a couple rods in there because I don't want that those blocks moving. In there. What I like to do is lay it all out dry first. Then the owner that wants me to build this uh, garden table will know exactly where it goes. Now, for an example, plan was for 33 inches, came out, looked at it and said, no way. So it changed, 27 inches. But the point is, always keep checking as you're going and then let them look at it and then as you go, everything will work out. I'm going to my block. I'm using rapid set because I want to finish this job in one day. the block moving on me. So I got them two up right there, right here. I got that rod. I'm going to fill that solid up here. I did the front of this building about 10 years ago, so this is the look we got to get, and I got a match. So we're going to go out there and I'm going to show you what I'm doing. So I just finished this side right here. Now I'm going to come over here and start doing this pier. Now I'm doing exactly as I did. Wet it first. I always tell you wet it first. That uh, cement sticks a lot better. And just using straight Portland. That's, that's masonry sand for outside. This is going to be outside. Same thing. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because y'all seen this on my other videos. And get it. Shake it on. That's it. It's Portland and sand. Two sand to one Portland. That's what I'm using. And the same thing on this side. Wet it a little bit first. If you want it to stick better. Like that. Throw it on there. Get it and shake it in. Uh oh, how did I do that? And shake it in. Right in the place. And I'm cutting my stones like I always do. I'm 
know, once I cut my stones, I usually face them. That gives them a rough edge. It just makes it look a lot better, just like I did on my other videos. It dresses it up. They call it dressing. And just like my other videos, break it out. Use the paintbrush. And get yourself rinse the sponge out and over the top of it like that. You know that cement off of it. Always make sure to rinse the sponge out. See that? I'm back the next day because I was too lazy to finish it that day and it was too hot. But these forms right here, I'm gonna try to get them up. I'm gonna get them up like an inch. I got my forms up. One one and a half inches all the way around. I'll put the level on to check it. I'm putting my stone base in. What I like to do is, is cut all the stones first. One reason is when I mix my cement, I'm ready to go, I just put them in. The other reason is I'm on the what they call the redneck retirement plan. If them pink paw balls come in, that lottery commission calls me, I gotta go. That's it, I'm all ready to go. I'm just mixing up the cement, two sand to one Portland, just like on my other videos. Now we're gonna be, begin to put the stones on. What I like to make sure is get a wet sponge Make sure it's clean and the surface is damp. And just like in my uh, other videos that you've seen, two sand, one Portland. Two to one. Get it in there. Like that. I get a rubber hammer. And you know what? I'm doing a I want to make sure the water goes away. So that's what I'm going to do with the whole thing, just like that. like on my stone patio video and let that all set see I put it right in 20 minutes I'm done everything was cut everything's gonna dry at the same time that's the idea I just went around it once it's about 20 minutes later then I'll I'll be hitting it again now we're filling that hole up with that rod in it right there make sure that that don't move uh, this is the back of the table the owner wants and uh, here's my center mark for the pier and my center mark from the pier so I'm just going to put a couple of lines in here so it sticks. Thing. I put a couple uh, 
Let's put a couple screws in there to hold it. But anytime I want something to stick like that, I want that to stick when I put it on. You see that? So I do that first. Put on. I'm doing my second go around and this is a concrete edger. When I do a stone sidewalk or a patio, I usually like to use that edger because it's a real nice clean, it's a clean ending. It's straight. Even if your stonework ain't straight, it looks like it's straight. So I'm going over this the second time and if you know, I put this on gravel. And I got the rods coming up through. If I want to move this, I can move it. I can get a bar under it. If I dug a deep footer and it was on top of old rotted roots and it tipped, I'd have to dig the whole thing out to move it. So I'm a very big fan of just putting stuff on gravel, unless you definitely have to. So right now I'm just going to give you a little speech on gravel. You know I put that little table on gravel. Sometimes they say, well, you got to dig a deep footer you gotta go down 42 inches, all this stuff. No way, I don't go with that. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. If I went over and dug down and there was roots or an old stump down there, it was filled in, the whole thing would tip and I have to dig it all out. So I lay it on gravel, I can move it around with a bar if it ever sank in the future, just like on How I Raise a Sidewalk video. And you look at these railroad tracks, there's no footer under these railroad tracks, it's gravel. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tons of weight be pounding on this every day. Best footer in the world is gravel. You gotta decide when you're building something, should I put it on gravel or should I put it on a footer? So it's something I gotta keep reminding everybody about. 